What's up guys, my name is John Hammond. In the last video we were looking at Flask with Python and setting up some Jinja2 templates. So we had a parent template and a child template, so we'd have a base page and a home page that would extend from that template, and really cool things. But now we want to get into like actually like styling our web page and having pretty pictures and cool fonts and stuff like that. So those files, a CSS files, images, fonts, and JavaScript files are considered static files because those don't particularly change, right? So in Flask, you can like pass those to the end user. They'll be served on the web application by living and existing in a specific file location called static. Like the same way we have a templates folder, we also want to have a static folder. So inside that static folder, you'll have the location of files like master.css or stylesheet.css or font.ttf, stuff like that. I like to actually organize my things into like image directory or CSS directory or font directory, stuff like that. So once those all exist, we can actually have those locations in there. We'll go ahead and create a new style sheet. I'll call mine stylesheet.css. And let's just have the HTML of the page kind of shrunk, so we'll have the width be just 600 pixels and uh, put it in the very center of the page, right? Cool. Let's have a uh, body with borders on it. Let's say the border left can be uh, one pixel solid silver, and we'll do the same thing with right. There's, I'm sure there's a neater, better way to do that, um, so forgive me, but I'm sure you'll bear with me on my crappy CSS files. Um, Cool, whatever. Now that we have this CSS file, let's go ahead and give that to our application. So the base page.html, which is our template, remember, our like global template and layout, we can change in the head of every single page to include a new style sheet. rel equals style sheet, type equals um, text CSS, and href can equal now, we use a special syntax that's actually taking advantage of some of the Jinja template engine to be able to load this specific file. Because Flask is peculiar with how it like actually has URLs and locations of things, it can be passed by using the function URL4. And that will actually build out the path for the file name that we're trying to get at. So, URL4, you'll see in... Um, other use cases, it'll actually determine like what is the URL for that function or what, something specific that we're trying to look for. We'll use it eventually, but we don't particularly need to uh, in this case. But if you were to give it like a function name as a string argument, it will actually determine like, okay, here is the route or the URL to actually get to that location. You can see it explained here in the example. You can pass in variables like username that will exist again in the context of that URL route or arguments passed to the specific function. And that's pretty neat. Um, we'll do that for when we have to do like login and special sessions and keeping track of like user information. But for now, we'll just need it in the case of a static file, which will use static as the special string argument, the location that we're looking for, and specify the file name as a keyword argument. So Inside of a template, we have to access that with those special Jinja like notifiers, right? The indicators here, those curly braces. So you can use URL4, static, and our file name would normally be um, stylesheet.css if it were in the like top of the static directory. But since we are in CSS forward slash, because it's the, the folder that that lives in, as you can see, static could be in any of these directories, but it's in CSS. So that's the location that we can pass it. Now, that home.html will obviously include that when it's rendered out. So we can go back, run our application, and check out that page, which now should have that CSS intact. So we've got cheesy borders, we can add padding, we've shrunk the center of the page and put it in just in the middle. So that looks, okay, kind of nice. We can expand on that and do more cool things with it. But that is the basics of loading a static file. You can do this like for JavaScript files that again, we can create a new directory for that in our static directory. Just make drjs so we don't have to have JavaScript in line in our HTML. We can have input that in an external file. Same thing for fonts, etc., or images. 
let's go ahead and add an image to this. In our home.html, we can say it is presented by YouTube videos. And then we'll include an image, caps lock, <laughs> based off of a URL here. Remember, URL for static and image or file name will have to equal image.youtube.png. And we'll go ahead and put a file in there. Cool. Paste that in. If I load this now, as this page refreshes, we have that image just displayed, just like that. So that is the syntax and technique for actually loading static files, and they're awesome. But that URL4 function, you'll see again and again, but that is how uh, Flask takes advantage of like loading files that aren't relative to your path of the script or anything. It has to go through that specific means of loading a static file. So cool. Keep that in mind. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I need to give a little bit of a shout out to my supporters here. Thank you guys so, so much for everything that you do on Patreon. It super duper helps me out. I can't say it enough. Uh, $1 on Patreon will give you a little shout out just like this at the very end of every video. $5 a month gives you early access to videos that I release on YouTube before they are gradually uploaded. And uh, I appreciate all the love. It, it helps me uh, put food on the table. Hey, if you did like the video, please do press that like button. Maybe leave me a comment if you're willing to subscribe. And if you want to support me, check me out on Patreon. Thanks, guys. See you soon.